Tonight on Missing Persons Unit... It's a truck driver that may be um, in company of the missing person. Andrea Streak is caught on camera, but who's that with her? We've now got a lead and we're getting closer to finding out where she is. The new search for missing mum, Joanne Butterfield. She wanted to disappear, that was her words, um, for the sake of her children. A Queensland cop travels thousands of kilometres looking for a lead. I think they'll, eventually they'll find a bone. And the disappearance of an English tourist. People have done this in the past, so they've just left everything and just want to move on and just try to start a, a new life. And just what clues will her luggage reveal? I only feel like that, please. Just let us know that you're OK. Also, the sad case of teenager Renee. Hopefully she's not in Sydney on the streets. Missing for seven months, but her mum will never give up hope. You just love your mate and you need to let us know that you're OK. Can you please just let us know you're OK? Morning, everyone. 18 cases overnight. So it's 8 a.m. and the missing persons unit are being briefed on another big day. Gary, here's one for you. A 17-year-old girl reported missing by her mum. Senior Constable Gary Bailey gets the unusual case of teenager Renee. She left home with her boyfriend at 15, but that was two years ago. She hasn't heard from her for over seven months, and that'd be worrying for any mother. Gary, we've got one for you. A 24-year-old backpacker who's been missing for over two days now. Senior Constable Gary Melchiori gets the case of an English girl named Frances who disappeared while on holidays to Australia. She didn't turn up to a farewell party, missed the flight home. Very strange one. Liz, today you'll be continuing your search for Andrea Streak. Senior Constable Liz Secluna continues her search for missing teenage mum Andrea Streak. Andrea disappeared after placing a personals ad wanting to meet a truckie with tattoos. The dangerous scenario is that she could be anywhere with anyone. And I'll be out on the road today at King's Cross with a detective from Queensland looking for Joanne Butterfield, one of their long-term missing persons cases. Let's go for it. Meanwhile, in Queensland, Detective Sergeant Trevor Perham is hard at work. He's searching for missing mum of four and party girl, Joanne Butterfield. Her activities perhaps brought her into disrepute and she didn't want to have that uh, reputation hang over her children's heads. In 1998, before she disappeared, Joanne promised friends she was going to change her ways. She made comments to a number of people that her children would be better off uh, without her and she was going to disappear for their benefit. And that's exactly what happened. The 38-year-old vanished after visiting a friend in Mossman in far north Queensland. She visited Kevin just, um, uh, just after she was seen hitchhiking on the, on the highway there and she hasn't been seen since. Unfortunately, he's passed on some years ago. Then, a few days after she disappeared, things went from bad to worse. Her dress that she was wearing and her carry bag and um, her passport turns up on a railway line two hours south. What, what's it doing there? How did it get there? We don't know. There's a number of possibilities with this case that she's met with foul play or that she's just simply cut all ties with her family um, and relocated somewhere else and is living somewhere else uh, as she said she intended to do. And maybe she is. Trevor's just received news of a sighting in Sydney. If you sort of look anywhere, I suppose there's a greater chance of finding her in Sydney than anywhere else. Hello, mate. How are you? Good, thanks. Yourself? Meanwhile, back in Very Sydney... Good. Just ringing up about the Andrea Street matter. Yeah, it's day like five no, in Liz Secluder's night, search yeah. for the 18-year-old um, mother of uh, two toddlers, uh, Andrea uh, Streak. I finally received contact from... From one of the uh, from one of the uh, suspects identified. Senior Constable Secluna is on the phone to Detective Sanji Chowdhury, who's been tracing Andrea's mobile calls. He informed me that uh, the last contact that he did have with, with the missing person was on Saturday, um, and she was now on her way to Brisbane 
um, with a truckie that she'd met up there at Parkville. In our last program, Andrea walked out on de facto Daryl and her two little ones. She'd been caught secretly chatting up a truckie on the phone. But well, when she got a phone, I said, you were talking to a fella, and, and that's when she sort of broke down. And... The next day, Daryl saw Andrea's suggestive ad in the personal columns. This is 18-year-old mum, loves pubs, loves uh, tattoos, looking for Aussie truck driver or something, aged 20 to 40. 24 hours later, she was caught on surveillance footage at this truck stop. And then, three days after that... I just got a message from her. Andrea sent this text to her distraught mother. Tell Daryl I'm not with another man and I'm just getting some help I need. Today, Detective it's Chowdhury is at Andrea's house with news about a truckie she's also been texting. We've confirmed a particular a uh, gentleman lives up in the Hunter Valley area. Probably was Paul that called on, on Friday. Do you know where he is? Yeah, yeah. Like, yep, yep. yep. You know who he is and yep. where he is. Oh. Yeah. We've got his residential address, we've got his phone numbers, we've got the police up the Hunter Valley that are making inquiries with, with him. They're probably on their way right now um, and they're going to knock on his door. Yeah, so, that's good. so since last night, we've now got a lead um, and we're getting closer to finding out where she is. Anything further happens? Especially if she rings, yep. try to make contact with yourselves. Yeah. Please just ring straight away. Yeah. 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 Right. They may be one step closer, but with Andrea possibly heading further north with another truckie, time is running out. Meanwhile, in the search for Joanne Butterfield, Trevor's on his way to southern New South Wales to interview her sister. I'm going to Minigong to speak to Joanne's sister, Belinda. Belinda's told me that she remembers a conversation with Joanne just before she went missing, and Joanne told her that she was uh, going to come to Sydney. Trevor is certain the mother of four was on her way to see her sister in 1998, but she never made it. Well, I'm hoping Joanne made it to Sydney. I'm hoping Belinda might be able to um, give me a clue as to perhaps where Joanne may have gone and give us somewhere else to go and. Um, ask questions and maybe find her, if she's down here. Back at Missing Persons headquarters, in the case of runaway teenage mum Andrea Streak... I believe you've got some developments with that one. Liz gets an update from detectives on their visit to the home of Paul the truckie. Police went round to his house and they've conducted a, a canvas of his place and that was a consensual entry into the, into the property. Yep. Um, and there was no... The missing person wasn't there. There was no sign of any such female being there. When police checked Paul's mobile phone, they found a new text from Andrea. But this message was sent from an unknown number. It sounds like it's, it's, it's a truck driver that may be um, in company of the missing person um, or maybe still conveying the missing person somewhere. Fantastic. Well, what I'll do is I'll get off the phone from you. I'll find out who this uh, phone number belongs to and see what we come up with after that. Excellent. Fantastic. Thanks for that. See you, Liz. See ya. Bye. We'll need to locate uh, where this truckie possibly is and head out there and, and see if we can pull the vehicle over and see if she's with him. So we need to act quick. At the same time, Trevor is about to meet Joanne's little sister, Belinda. He hopes she might be able to give him yeah. a new lead. How are you doing? Nice to Belinda's been caring for Joanne's youngest son, Thorne, ever since his mum disappeared. The reason why you looked after your kids from time to time? Basically because she'd be very depressed, um, feeling like she couldn't go on with the children. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until um, probably a couple of months before she disappeared that um, she was so down that she had gone to the doctors and that they'd said she was schizophrenic. And she told a number of people that she um, intended to disappear, she said, for the sake of her kids, because she thought she was a, a bad mother and her kids would be better off without her. Yeah, she often felt that way. At one particular time, I had the young fella here for almost two years, um, since he was six weeks old. And the other children I had, like, for months on end throughout a year, depending on how well she was. Mm. But she would never leave it this long. Something's gone wrong, and I just don't know what. 
back at Missing Persons Headquarters. Hello, Daryl. Oh, hello, Lynn. Hello, it's Liz Sucluna calling you. Six days into the search for Andrea Streak, and there's finally a breakthrough. She rang up, she was in a fair bit of a state. Yeah. And um, she said that she's all right. Her mum emphasised that she, she has to get to um, the police station and just notify that she's all right. Do you know what the content was, like what she said? She was almost at the point of self-harm, oh. and her mum believed that. Andrea's road trip, which was intended to sort things out, has become a nightmare. Not looking too good, so... And it wasn't until a good Samaritan in a road train stopped to help her. So this male from Beresford is currently looking after her? Um, supposedly, yeah. Do you believe it's out of character for her to stay with complete str strangers, or...? Oh, yeah. Yeah? That's what I said to Mum. I said, it's still... I said, why didn't she come home? If she honestly believes she needs help, she should be home where we can help her, you know? Or I can help her, or someone can help her. Oh, poor thing. All right, then. And look after yourself. Hello, Luke. OK, bye. Bye-bye. We're just still very worried for her. We need to find out who she's with. We can't confirm whether or not these people are helping her. Um, like Daryl said, this is extremely out of character for her to stay with complete strangers. So it's still very imperative that we find out where she is. Meanwhile, in the case of Joanne Butterfield... You mentioned to me that um, she told you about coming to Sydney. Trevor gets some startling news. Young Thorne had been flown over to Sydney to live with his um, father, his real father, and then she said to me she was concerned um, because every time she'd rang the school, um, they said that they had no longer had a boy there by that name. Witnesses have told Trevor that Joanne fled to Sydney to change her identity eight years earlier. But she was, she was really trying hard to find um, what school he was in. But her sister Belinda says Joanne was actually looking for her youngest child, Thorne, who was then living somewhere in Sydney with his father. She said to me, she said, oh, look, I'm coming down. She said, oh, I'm coming. She said, I've got to find him. She said, just to make sure he's OK. And, um, yeah, that was the last conversation that we had. She was going to come down to make sure he was OK. But Joanne never made it. And, of course, Thorne still believes his mum will turn up one day. But Grandfather Barry is not so sure. It was a hell of a shock when they said that she'd gone. Uh, she was a Roma, but never, never ever thought that she was. I think they'll, eventually they'll find a bone. But I don't know. Meanwhile, after a week of searching, it's finally great news in the case of missing teenage mother, Andrea Streak. Oh, it's a huge sense of relief for the family and for us. Um, we're just pleased that she's come home on her own accord and, and has contacted everyone to let them know that she's safe. Hello. Andrea's back home safe and sound, and the relief on Daryl's face says it all. Got some talking to do. Liz still needs to know what happened. So what happened? Where did you where did you go? Um, went up to, to Brisbane and then we went out to to Griffith and then um, round to um, Shepparton. And um, yeah, I was ready to come home. And I've done a lot of thinking and gave me a lot of time and no pressure. And it's because of the stress of being such a young mum that the 18-year-old suddenly took off. Yeah. Tried for so long just to keep keep it together and, and keep it inside, and that was that was what was wrong. Yeah. So for over a week, Andrea crisscrossed the country, pouring her heart out to a truckie named Shane. I think we're very lucky that that um, it was a good person that spotted that oh, she was in trouble. You know. She could have, um, it could have been a lot worse, and obviously that was not what I was most fearful of. But, you know, it could have turned out a hell of a lot worse. Yeah. Meanwhile, back on the case for Joanne Butterfield, 
Trevor's following up information that she might be living on the streets in Sydney. I'm actually looking for a, um, for a missing person from North Queensland. So Sergeant Mark Samways from the New South Wales Missing Persons Unit is helping Trevor search homeless in shelters in the, last, in the CBD. Last couple of months or no, 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 no worries. No, no, no. We probably have up to 100 people that come in a day, maybe five or six women. So yep. the women do tend to stand out. Yep. Um, but I can definitely say uh, well, of that small pool that comes here, she's not one of them. All right. But with okay. no luck here, Mark suggests they try King's Cross. Meanwhile, at Windsor, west of Sydney... We're just glad that everyone's happy oh, yeah. that you're back yeah. home again. Andrea and Daryl begin the long road back by trying to talk about and understand what happened. It was bad enough when Andy broke down Friday night and with what happened, it was, it was bad enough. Um, but by the time, by lunchtime Saturday when I hadn't heard, I knew, you know, that's why I started to panic. That's why I rang the police and by Saturday night I was in a bit of state. Um, mm. Yeah, and it just got worse, you know, there's no contact. It just got worse, you know, and it's the sort of person, she keeps contact all the time with lots of people. Um, when you have someone like that, it suddenly just disconnects from everyone. It's damn scary. If I'd asked for help a long time ago, then uh, I wouldn't have even had to have gone through any of this. So, you know, there's a lot of really good young mums out there, but sometimes you just need a little bit of help, and you shouldn't hesitate to ask for that. There's a lot of problems there that she needs to sort out, but um, being a young mum with two children, it's, it's not easy. You know, postnatal depression is, is something that a lot of women suffer and, and they def definitely do need help. But she's got the numbers to, to contact, so hopefully she makes that phone call. We're all very supportive of her and she's got a very supportive family and we just hope for the best for them. See you later. It's a good result. One that could have easily have ended in tragedy. Yeah. You right? Yeah. <laughs> At the same time, back in King's Cross, Mark and Trevor are still searching the streets and homeless hostels for Joanne Butterfield. Hello, Emma. Good. Good to see you again. See you, this is Trevor from uh, North Queensland. There you go. Same here. Um, Trevor's come down to investigate one of his long-term missing persons and we're giving him a hand. And um... This lady here used to go by the name of Joanne. These photos are a little bit old now. Um, she's probably 10 years older than how she appears in that photo there. Doesn't ring any bells. To this woman, Joanne is just another lost face from someone's photo album. But here in Mittagong, southwest of Sydney, the same picture is a stark reminder of the sister and the mother they lost. <laughs> and that's Joe, that's the way she was. <laughs> Joanne's family still hold hope that one day she'll walk back in the door. Sis, if you're watching this right now, we'd love you to contact us, please. Because Dad, Dad's not well, and your kids miss you so much, and so do I. So please, if you are watching, please call us. Mum, if you're watching this, I um, just want to know like, I miss you and that. I didn't really know when I was young, but yeah, I just want to get in contact with you. Please come home. Or if there's anybody out there that knows anything, please, please call Crime Stoppers. Thank you. Meanwhile, in the CBD of Sydney, who could forget hey, the case of missing dementia sufferer and boxing champion Ray Perez? Up the stairs. Have you seen this bloke around at all? In our earlier program, Gary Bailey Hello. began the search for Ray. Good fighter, was he? Yeah, he was. A long career. How long since you've seen him? Over 100 first class fights left Ray with memory loss. He just gets a bit confused about where he lives now. Go to the body, Jet. When Ray disappeared, his old boxing mates appealed to the nation. 
to help find him. Anybody that's seen Ray Perez around, I plead to them, I plead them, to get in touch with somebody, somebody, somebody's pal, who me. If Ray's watching this, can you please report to the police and let them know that everything's OK? And after Ray's story was shown on Missing Persons Unit, the tiny pug was spotted and returned home. His mates were delighted and relieved. Today, Ray's back at his gym where Gary is going to give him a safely home bracelet. And if you get a bit confused and don't know where you are, It'll just help identify him if he ever goes missing again. Point it out, just sort of go like that and tell him. And they'll make a call, mate, and you'll be home in a jack flash because, you know, it's just too risky to be out there. And what is that? What does that say? That, that, that just, uh, that's got a name on it. It's called a safely home. you just got to show it to someone and then yeah. they'll, they'll look after it from there. Yeah, if you can do that, mate, I'll wear mine. You've got to wear yours, OK? A little encouragement mate, always helps, particularly right. from top right. trainer Johnny right, Lewis. Mate, you look after yourself. How about that? Right. How about that? And with the bracelet now firmly on his wrist, this little fighter will be safely on his way home if he's ever lost again. Back at the missing persons unit... Hello, is that Melanie? Yes, Gary yeah, Melchiori has Gary begun Melchiori his new case to find English tourist Francis. Have you gone back to her place to see she's taken her stuff? Yeah, I've just picked up the suitcase now. Her best friend, Melanie, says it's out of character for Frances to leave her luggage behind. Yeah, she was going to pick up her clothes. Yeah. To come to my house at 5 o'clock. Yeah. Because we'd organised a big farewell day for her. Yeah. yeah. But Frances never made it. And Melanie believes Frances's ex-boyfriend might know something. See, she's been crying to him, saying she doesn't want to leave. You know, but then when I've, she's spoken to me, she's been saying that she can't wait to go home. No, OK. Yeah, it's you know, things strange. aren't... Yeah. yeah. OK? Oh, no worries, okay. thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. She's made no contact with her friends or family back in the UK. Um, her mobile phone message bank is full. To go missing like that seems a bit strange. And Gary knows time is crucial. He needs to interview Frances's ex and check her bags as soon as possible. On the other side of the office, Liz Secluna has returned from finding Andrea Strick. She's now helping Gary Bailey search for 17-year-old Renee. Hello. Hello, is that Evelyn? Yes, it is. Hi, Evelyn. It's Liz Secluna. Liz is talking to Renee's mum, who let her daughter move in with her older boyfriend when she was just 15. It was either that or she was going to run away from home anyway. But she kept in contact for that for the first year and then we just didn't hear anything. Um, my mum was sending stamped addressed envelopes for her and we've had no, 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 nothing from her. After not hearing from her daughter for seven long months, Evelyn reported her missing to police. They went out to that address and apparently no one's been there for a long time. You don't know any of the friends? I've run into all the friends down here and they've all said she hasn't contacted any of them. Did she keep any diaries or anything like that? Anything when she moved out, she took everything with her. All right then, well, we'll come up this morning. OK, I'll talk to you then. Thank you for See you, Evelyn. Bye. Bye, -bye. We're a bit concerned why it took so long for her mum to report her missing. She seems to be pretty close to the grandparents and there's been no contact there. So we're going to go up to Woi Woi and, and have a chat with mum. In his hunt for missing English tourist Francis, Gary's on his way to interview her ex-boyfriend and to check suitcases she left at his place. We're looking for any sort of photos or any sort of pieces of paper or contact numbers that um, she might have left in the suitcase. Francis's ex-boyfriend claims he saw her three days ago, just before she vanished. Where did you last see her? The tram lines are that joint pitch street. Near where Central Railway is, you mean, down that end? I took her into the park, so He tells Gary about Francis's yeah. other acquaintances, a group of men from Queensland. So do you know who these people are at all? I've seen them once before. Yeah. They came here to pick her up. They went out for the night. Apparently, she always talks about them. Do you know any idea who would know these people? No one knows who they are. No one knows. Okay. 
pedal. You see those two bags? You want the whole lot? Um, what have you got? Gary's best chance of finding out what happened to Frances now lies in her locked luggage. Oh, is it? OK. They could reveal crucial clues. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the case of missing 17-year-old Renee... Hi, Evelyn. How are you going? I'm Liz. Hi, Liz. On the phone. How are you going? Oh, Gary. Gary. Hi, Gary. Liz needs to ask her mother, Evelyn, why she waited for months before reporting Renee missing. Firstly, what I wanted to find out from you is how long it, why did it take seven months for you to...? Because um, my mum was under the impression that she's just spreading her wings, leave her be. If she wants anything, she knows where you are and she'll contact us. When Renee moved out at 15, Evelyn left all contact no, up to her nana. My mum was sort of kind of saying, no news is good news. If she's in yeah. trouble, she'll be here. Because we've written like 50 letters each, um, sending phone cards and, and mail telling her that the back door's always open. If you have to turn up in the middle of the night, that's fine. But now, two years yeah, on, and child. no one knows where Renee or her boyfriend are. You said when she first met Adam, she changed. Yeah, she stopped seeing her friends and calling her friends. And I sat down and spoke to her and said, look, you shouldn't be just focused on Adam 24-7. And it, it seemed that that was, he was just the whole, uh, you know, everything. everything. Yeah, he made all the decisions on where to go and what to do and what she should wear and all this sort of stuff. And it's just been with him as far as I know. It's a story Liz has heard too many times. A young girl runs off with an older boyfriend, leaving her family heartbroken and fearing the worst. Back in the case of missing English tourist Francis, Gary is hoping her luggage will unlock clues that might lead him to her. She might have been um, trying to hide and just maybe running away from everyone and not wanting to come back to her responsibilities or anything like that. Or she could be um, something more sinister like found play. Um, people have done this in the past where they've just left everything and just want to move on and just try to start a, a new life. And this, this might be the case where she might have done that. Um, but um, it seems very strange that she's pretty much left everything it looks like here. Besides clothes, he discovers some personal information. Looks like there's a dress book there of names. And she might have like, left a diary here, might have written something in a diary as well. That could point us in some sort of direction, maybe her state of mind prior to the going missing too. But it's not the type of thing you'd leave behind, unless Francis had no choice. Back at the office, Gary's been sifting through everything in Francis's suitcases without any luck. She's left pretty much everything that she owns at Ryan. Right. Driver's license overseas. Looking at these photos, you know, she's obviously got a lot of friends and socialises a lot, you know, nightclubs and pubs. Um, my concern would be, um, as of late, there's been a lot of um, reported incidents of drink spiking and, and things like that. So, yeah, She's certainly an attractive girl and obviously go, frequents those sort of places, so I mean, there's always a, a chance that, you know, maybe something like that's happened or if a needle in a haystack, isn't it? Mm, <laughs> it is at the moment, it is. Meanwhile, Liz is still looking for the smallest lead in her search for 17-year-old Renee. Do you have any names at all? I wish I did. Nothing. No. Once she, she went with this boy, um, it's, there's been nothing. But because Renee's mum waited seven months to report her daughter missing, the trail has gone very cold. And her mum, Evelyn, now fears the worst. Hopefully she's not in Sydney on the streets, because if she's in trouble, well, we've got to get her out of whatever trouble she's in. She's a good, happy kid, and she deserves a good life. And whatever mess she's in, it doesn't matter. Whatever she's done, it doesn't matter. Doesn't Back at the missing persons unit, Sergeant Sutcliffe. It's now time to make the difficult call to Francis's dad. Uh, well, not very good. Um, okay. uh, you know, extremely worried actually. Um, Telling parents that their child has vanished is never easy. 
especially when they're 20,000 kilometres away and helpless. Do you have any thoughts about what may have happened or...? No, uh, no. well, you know, you can imagine if, uh, if, if suddenly your daughter goes missing and she's the other side of the world mm, and yeah. she doesn't respond to email, she doesn't respond to anything, then uh, I'm just extremely worried. I've Jane can day only day. imagine what it's like for Francis's dad. Have you got any leads? Have you got anything at all? At this stage, no. I, I'm not aware of uh, you know, any, any particular train of thought. OK, fine, OK. OK, fine. Um, I've got some photos of her here, so we'll get them um, put onto our database. Okay, okay. And um, we'll look at having some media. Okay, fine, okay. Thank okay. You. Thanks very much, thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, bye. bye. He's on the other side of the world and his daughter's gone missing, so I think he's, he's feeling a bit, you know, lost and hope, hopeless at the moment. In the case of 17-year-old Renee, Liz and Gary are at a New South Wales Central Coast police station to get an update on their investigations. How are you going? I'm Lisa Cluner. This is Gary Bailey. Hello, how are you going? Senior Constable Sherelle yeah, Jackson has been tracking Renee's older boyfriend, Adam. We made some inquiries trying to locate uh, the people that she had been known to be staying with um, and have had no luck there so far. So at this stage, uh, we have an old address and we're not sure where they've moved to. What about if you just do a, 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 an address history on him? And that's exactly what Liz an expert in computer investigation begins to do. So that's the only way I'm going to get it. Vehicle loan. She's tracking loan details on Adam's car. A bit more digging, and Liz hits pay dirt. Here we go. We've got an address for him at Long Jetty, and that looks like that was changed yesterday. Oh, OK, we checked that yesterday morning. It was still the address at Charmhaven. It's probably Charmhaven. come through, like, last night or this afternoon. Oh, That's just unbelievable. She has found Adam, and the address is just half an hour away. What luck. <laughs> All right, well, we might um, head out to Long Jetty to this address... OK. ..and see if, um, if he's there and if our missing person's there. Excellent. Back in Sydney, police have stepped up the search for the missing British tourist, Francis. City Central Police are also now on the case. We're going to meet with the uh, detectives here and pass over the property that we've collected for Francis and just have a talk with them and see where they're up to with the investigation and compare notes with them. Detectives have located Francis's best friends, Melanie and Kate, who reported her missing. She's a wonderful person. She's the life and soul of the party when she's there, she you know. She's the best in the face. She's, she's, it's just so out of character for the Francis that we know for her to do something like this. But Kate fears their friend's recent state of mind may have led to her disappearance. Unfortunately, her mum passed away a few years ago. Whether this could be a knock-on effect of something, you know, that, that happened at that, you know, that time ago, we just, we just don't know. We're just so worried about her, mm, just for her safety and her well-being. Meanwhile, on the central coast, north of Sydney, Liz and Gary are on the trail of 17-year-old runaway Renee. We've um, found on RTA records um, a current address for Renee's boyfriend. So we're going to attend there right now and find out why she has taken off. I mean, if she doesn't want to go home, we'll notify her mum that she's safe and well. We'll have to leave it at that. It's the best lead they've had in seven months. Liz could now be just 20 minutes away from finding Renee. Anything you need to know from us? Meanwhile, while Francis's friends aren't sure why she disappeared, they're worried about her recent behaviour, which led to her making strange new friends. And just found her talking to, like, an 80-year-old man at the bus stop, or just... And I've noticed when I had a conversation with her and then somebody came into the conversation that she didn't know, it almost seemed like she was more comfortable talking to them than she was talking to me. Looking for any lead, Kate and Melanie make a desperate plea. 
please, guys, please, if anyone sees her, just get in contact with the missing persons or the police. Yeah, if you're out there, please, just let us know that you're OK. Anything. Just give us a call or a text, Fran. I just want to know that she's OK. I just... I don't understand. Back at the missing persons unit, there's an update on a cold case. Last year, we brought you the tragic story of missing woman Tale Pless. How confident are you that it's her? Have to be 99, 100%. I think so. Yeah, definitely a girl. Following the nationwide publication of this photo, police received a number of credible sightings of 39-year-old Tale, who had been missing for a decade. She just up and left. you got to give and take age. And... Yeah. Is she a working girl? Place hasn't changed, yeah. mate. The hair, the hair is the same. Yeah. Yeah. A bit of... And when this lookalike also called Tale agreed to a DNA test... Thank you for that. ..police hoped that 10 years of searching might be over. Essentially, Tale Pickering is excluded as being the biological daughter of Lana Place. Yeah, I thought it would be quite heartbreaking for the mum. You know, to get the information and then get a phone call later and say, no, sorry, it's not. It was also heartbreaking for Tale's brother, Richard, who has never stopped looking for his sister. If you see Tale, anyone that resembles Tale's photo, um, if you might even know her as Tale, for God's sakes, um, please um, just call the missing persons. Many of our viewers who saw the story did call, but Tale is still missing. So the coroner has now delivered his finding. Meanwhile, north of Sydney, Liz and Gary are chasing down their only good lead in the search for 17-year-old Renee. What flat is it? Unit number three. Mm -hmm. This is her older boyfriend Adam's last known address. And if they're lucky, they'll find Renee here. I don't think there's anyone home, a little bit. But no one's home. So they decide to question neighbours. We're looking for someone that's missing. It's a young girl. And if I show you a photo, you might be able to help us. Renee, have you seen this girl before? No. No, you haven't seen her in that unit before? No, because we only have Jamie. Only two people I've seen as a... Is Jamie a male or a female? Female, yeah. And who's Jamie? Is that Jamie... Is Jamie Adams' girlfriend? Was, yeah. We're just making some inquiries because this girl's been reported missing. Yeah. Oh, thanks, mate. While Adam's definitely been staying here... If you just let him know to give us a call, Phil. No one remembers seeing Renee. All right. I'm Renee, we love you very, very much. You're my baby. Nan and Pop miss you. You're their little ray of sunshine. And just please, you know, your brother misses you too. He asks for Sissy all the time. We just love you, mate, and you need to let us know that you're okay. Can you please just let us know you're okay? Back in the long-term case of Tale Pless, after 10 years of searching, there's a coronial finding in the case. The state coroner has informed us that uh, Tale died on or about the 11th of October 1996, not long after she went missing. He um, determined that she died by suicide. Diana now has to update Tale's brother, Richard. Hi, Richard speaking. Hi, Richard. It's Constable Diana Casey from the New South Wales Police Missing Persons Unit. How are you going? Hi, Diana. Have you been informed on the coroner's finding? Well, obviously, I can't quote it word for word, yep. but it was uh, very bland, you know, very impersonal. OK. And uh, effectively stated that uh, the coroner had found that Tale was deceased mm -hmm. and taken her own, well, by her own hand. Yep on or about the date that she went missing. But Richard says without Tale's body, he will never accept the coroner's findings. Where he's getting this information from 
<laughs> beats the hell out of me. We will not accept that finding. Uh, we will not seek a death certificate. Uh, Tale is alive. And at the missing persons unit, the case will always remain active. In future, if we get any more leads in relation to Tale Pless, her whereabouts or any sightings of her, we will apply to the state coroner to get the case reopened and we will investigate all the inquiries that we get. Back at home, 10 years of waiting have taken their toll on Richard. These days, he finds it very difficult to get on with life. All he wants is for someone to call with news about Tale. Please just look, make a call. Not just for Tale, but for anyone that's missing, you know? I mean, obviously we want to see Tale, but there's a lot of missing people out there. And, um, your call makes a difference. Back in the case of Renee, Liz and Gary are still hoping someone in these flats can lead them to the missing 17-year-old. We're just making some inquiries, trying to find uh, out uh, where a missing person might be staying. Have you seen this girl at all? 17-year-old girl? No, no she hasn't seen her. No. OK. Um, we believe that she might be staying in this unit here. Okay. Does that jog a memory at all? Um, she could be. I really don't see the girl that's in there. I only see the two guys that live in there. OK, so um, who are the two guys that live in number three? Um, the, I only know one of them is Adam. OK. Another confirmation that her older boyfriend, Adam, lives here, but no sign of the teenager. I haven't seen them for a couple of days, so all of them. Oh, OK. Is that unusual? Yeah. Their car's usually here every day, but it hasn't been here for a couple of days. And they packed up his four-wheel drive a couple of days ago too. Adams? Mm -hmm. Do you know what sort of four-wheel drive Adam drives? Uh, I think it's a Nissan. It's white and blue. It's got a lot of stickers over it. So they packed that up a couple of days ago. Yeah. Do you know what they were packing it up with? Oh, there was a mattress and bags of things. He told me his parents were moving to Queensland. And then two days later they were packing up. They had the four-wheel drive packed in. And um, it was full of, yeah, stacked to the roof with stuff. So you see his Liz knows if she can't find Adam, she may also no, lose her only link no, to Renee. No. So it's a bit of a worry because if she's not here and she's not with the boyfriend that we thought she was with, who is she with and where is she? Every year, over 30,000 people go missing. Have you seen 40-year-old Lazarus Anastasiadis, who disappeared from New South Wales in 1998? or 59-year-old Renata Wallanen, missing from Linden Park, South Australia, in 1989. And 21-year-old Gary Adams, last seen in Victoria in 2003. If you have any information, please call 1800 333 000.